Throughout my career as an architect, I've had the great fortune of working with a lot of, a lot of wonderful institutions and organizations. I work with them and for them. And one of those is Canine Companions for Independence. It's even more special when that organization is mission driven, making the opportunity to help them change, grow, and expand even more meaningful to those of us involved. Such is the case for Canine Companions. Their mission and purpose, which you'll hear a lot about, is to provide exceptional dogs for exceptional people. Then it's icing on the cake when that organization has leadership that is smart, hardworking, effective, and collaborative. Megan Kester and her team of staff and volunteers fits that bill to a T. Megan is beginning her fourth year as executive director of the North Central Region Canine Companions for Independence. 2018 is going to be an exciting year for them. I think every year is exciting for the work they do, but especially exciting in, exciting in 2018 as they begin to move forward on the construction of their new campus in Albany. Prior to joining CCI, Megan was Senior Director of Development at the Ronald McDonald House for Charities. She held that position for four years. Prior to that, she was Arts and Science Development Director at Ohio State, again for four years which followed being Director of Team and Training at the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, and you guessed it, for four years. <laughs> then she was at Ohio State for four years, where she earned her BA in Communications and a minor in Business Management. The string of fours doesn't extend to her personal life and her family. She has just one husband. <laughs> and to get, at least as far as I know. <laughs> and they are busy enjoying their twin boys. How old are they? Four. They're four. <laughs> I thought they were three. They're four. Okay. Megan grew up in Westerville. She now lives with her family in Hilliard. Please help me welcome Megan Kester. Thank you, Keith, for your warm introduction and my series of fours, which have ended now because my children are turning five and I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> my table's concerned. <laughs> uh, we are very, very pleased to be here today on behalf of Canine Companions for Independence and to take this opportunity to share a little bit about our organization. This, as Keith mentioned, is a very exciting time for us as we continue to grow and we couldn't think of a better audience to share our mission with as we grow so that you too can share the opportunities that we provide to individuals. So I want to start off by showing you just one of the tests that are done by our teams together. So we are an organization that provides highly trained assistance dogs to provide greater independence and a sense of community to children, adults, and veterans with disabilities. Some of that happens even in our retail spaces when counters are higher than we might be. And so these dogs have the opportunity to get a credit card, complete the transaction, bring it back to the individual. And while that sounds really amazing, it's actually also incredibly important. So we touched on this. This is truly our mission, and we are doing this every day. But it takes a village to make this mission happen. We are helping in many different ways, whether it is an individual returning to work and being able to go to work and rely on themselves and the dog collectively as a team instead of a colleague. It is going to school and having a very different course of experiences for a child in the classroom. It is even a facility dog going to work with a professional and helping their clients do things better. And we'll talk more about that. First, I want to start off with the fact that we are a national organization. We are 42 years old. We're based out of Santa Rosa, California. And we do our work is structured through six regional training centers across the country. We are lucky enough to have one of those regional training centers here in central Ohio. But we're also represented in California, New York, Florida, Texas, and Ohio. 
We have graduates, though, in all 50 states, and while we only have offices in six different locations, we actually have volunteers, puppy raisers, um, donors, and friends in all of those states, including volunteer chapters and groups who were actively involved in more than 30 cities across the country. We've placed over 5,500 teams, and we have over 3,000 volunteers. But to bring that back home a little bit, let's talk about the North Central region. This is the group that is focused here. Our current office is in Delaware, Ohio, and we are serving a 14-state region. So everything from Western Pennsylvania through the Dakotas and from Wisconsin down to Kentucky, anyone that gets involved with Canine Companions in that area is coming to Central Ohio, is touching our community, is spending time here, whether they are turning in a puppy for professional training, or they have applied to the program and are coming for an in-person interview, or lucky for them, they've been accepted to the program, and now they and their caregivers and their family will spend two weeks here as they learn how to work with a dog. We're bringing people here to Central Ohio. We're really excited to have a warm, welcoming community to bring them to. Um, but we've got people coming from all places. We've got five different volunteer chapters across the region in our major markets. We've got over 420 active graduate teams, and I will tell you that this region is the second highest producing region only to our home office, and that is counted or exhibited in the amount of active graduate teams we have as well as the amount of teams we place each year. We've got a phenomenal staff here on the ground doing great things. So let's talk about the different types of assistance dogs we provide. Most of you are most familiar with a service team. This is an individual and a dog that are paired together for greater independence, and they're doing tasks. They are doing things such as turning the lights off and on, helping with a transaction, most importantly, retrieving dropped items. It's a real issue if you drop your cell phone, and your cell phone is the thing that either unlocks your door or calls your aid or gets attention from someone. Um, so the fact that the dog can pick that up is amazing and completely helpful. We also have skilled companion teams. This, these teams are typically placed with children, and they're placed with the child and the, and the caregiver. So those two are out in public access. They are going through this journey together with the dog, um, and that's to make sure that the team is safe. Not only is it just the child taking care of the dog and working together as the team, but the caregiver can help along the way as well. Facility dogs are a great opportunity for some of our dogs to help professionals in their daily work with clients. For instance, we have two dogs placed at Nationwide Children's Hospital who are helping therapists with their patients who may not really want to do their therapy today, but when their therapy includes a dog, it gets a lot more fun and they're much more willing. And if our dogs can help advance the care and the health of those patients, we want to do it. Not only do we see it in medical situations, we also see this in the courtroom and in um, different firms. We also see this in rehabilitation centers. So our facility dogs are very specialty place that they're actually using tasks, much more than just an emotional support dog, but they are truly helping the clients advance their work. And then hearing dogs. For those that might be unable to hear sounds, these dogs are able to alert them. And while we think it's great to know the phone rang or the doorbell has been rung, it's most important when that individual is traveling and the dog is waking them in the middle of the night because the fire alarm is going off and they need to exit and they are staying there alone. And I can tell you story after story after story where these dogs have been the one that woke up the family that got them out. So um, this is really, really important work that we're doing here. Now it all starts with a puppy. I know a few of you have seen a few puppies in the room. We've got two puppies with us. And really, our program completely happens because of wonderful volunteer puppy raisers. We couldn't do it without them. This year alone, we'll have over 800 puppies born into the care of canine companions. And those puppies begin, um, they are bred at our facility in Santa Rosa, California. We have a national veterinary staff that oversees all the genetics and the care to make sure that we are producing a dog that has got a wonderful temperament, is very healthy, and is safe and looking for some great jobs ahead of them. 
and it continues on in the fact that they are born into the homes of our breeder caretakers. So they're actually born in the homes of volunteers and we want these puppies to start in a family environment because we know they're going to learn a lot about family along this journey. Once the puppies reach the eight weeks of age, they will come back to our training center, we'll do our testing, make sure everybody is good to go and do their first round of immunizations. And then at eight weeks of age, they fly across the country to meet their future volunteer puppy raiser. And so it's at that time that a volunteer puppy raiser welcomes a very adorable lab or golden retriever or a cross into their home and raises them from eight weeks to 18 months of age. And during that time, they're gonna do great socialization, such as listening to choirs and meetings and rotary meetings. <laughs> as well as going to the fire station and the grocery store and to restaurants to be exposed to different sounds. Um, we just had a actual placed service dog team at a Blue Jackets practice the other day and the dog slept through practice and I jumped off the bench at least 15 times. So this socialization is very important. Beyond that, they are trained 30 different commands. We work with the puppy raisers to help them through this training, but that basic obedience happens completely with our volunteers and we're so excited about that. At this time, I'm excited that we brought a couple of guests Rotarians, if you will. The mayor of Bell Fountain, Ben Stoller, and his wife, Sarah, have joined us. They are raising their sixth and seventh puppy that they have with them today. And Ben is a 30-year Rotarian. He started when he was two. And I'm going to let him share a few words about what it's like to be a puppy raiser. I'm comfortable giving you a rotary greeting. I'm missing my meeting back in Bell Fountain. Turn around. Sit down. Come here. Lay down. This is Aggie, and uh, we actually represent the bookends about uh, what you were told. Um, by the way, this is my lovely wife, Sarah, of course, and this is PETA. PETA just arrived three weeks ago from California, so she's 11 weeks old. Uh, I should tell you, we don't even take them out into public until they're six months old. So she not only is seeing her public for the first time today, that was that little bark you heard during choir. Uh, I think Aggie either watched every word that they said or slept. That's what they do. But PETA has to go back home now and wait till about March. So we don't take the dogs out into public, but uh, as you were told, it's a joy to uh, socially interact with them. So my Rotarians may miss Aggie today more than me. Uh, but as, as was mentioned, I'm a 30-year Rotarian. I think we hosted eight exchange students over the years. Uh, I led a group study exchange team to Italy for a month. That was a tough gig. Uh, we are, by the way, Bell Fountain is to your west, and so we're in 6670, so we're the clubs that run from uh, about north from Bell Fountain all the way to Cincinnati. So they'll be envious that I came to the Columbus Club today. Uh, don't have an opportunity just because of time to show you, but uh, when it was mentioned that we have kind of a list, a laundry list of 30 things to teach them, she had hers figured out at eight months of age. So the rest of it really becomes easy. Uh, it's reinforced and uh, it's just out there in public. Sarah and I will stick around, so if you need that puppy fix, uh, you, you'll get your dose. It's really inexpensive to pet little PETA and not take her home to chew your shoes or something fun like that. Uh, but Aggie is really lined up for the next class to go into advanced training, learn those cool things like opening the door for you, turning on and off the lights, picking up those dropped items. So it's a pleasure to be with you today, and we'll stick around later uh, so you can ask some questions. Thank you. They know who's at the end of their leash and when they can get away with things. <laughs> so we're very grateful for our puppy raisers who spend this time and we are always actively looking for new puppy raisers and it's an interesting thing because 
everyone always asks, so you raise them until 18 months and then what happens? Well, then we invite you to our regional training center to turn that dog into advanced training, just like Aggie will do here shortly. And at that point, we celebrate the work that the puppies raisers have been done, have been doing. They have been sharing with us monthly progress reports of the puppy, and now it's our turn to share progress back with them. So we often fun coin this as the dog is coming to college. We have semesters and there's two semesters so they're with us for six to nine months and in that time we're going to do those last 10 advanced commands that are taught by our professional trainers and then most importantly we're getting to know the temperaments of these dogs just like people dogs are completely different each one to the next and so we need to know if this dog's temperament is ready to take on the streets of downtown columbus if this dog is ready for some quiet time on a farm if this one is ready for lots of medical appointments and hanging around in quieter environments, or if this one is ready to travel the world. So as our trainers get to know that, we start reporting back to the puppy raisers and sharing, this is the progress your dog is making throughout that time. So in advanced training, we will formalize 40 commands. We will get to know these dogs. And about halfway through their team training, we now know the dogs. We're going to start to look at the applicants. So our applicants along the way have been going through also almost a two-year process. As they apply for a dog and we get to know them, we talk and get recommendations from someone, uh, one of their medical advisors. We will have them come to campus and spend some time with us to get to know what their lifestyles are like so we can match them with a dog and then they will join our wait list and then hopefully get called to class soon to meet a dog that can help them in their daily lives and that leads to team training so at this point we have figured out that these dogs and individuals are a good match we've got two to three dogs that we think could fit each individual that's invited to class and they stop their lives and these individuals travel to central ohio for two weeks of training so the dog got trained for two years but the person only gets two weeks <laughs> tough gig. <laughs> so in that two weeks, we spend the first few days introducing the individuals and the dogs and taking turns working together, different dogs, different people. But by the third morning, we've got it down. We know which dog is going to be paired with which person, and they are ready to go. Um, it's at that point that we formalize the commands. Sure, they have a toolbox of 40 commands, but we might want to string a couple of those together if taking off your socks and shoes is difficult difficult for you, we can put a couple commands together so they can do it for you and leave it in the same place for you every day, much better than we find in our own lives. <laughs> so with that, I also have joining me today Josiah Lanning. He is a two-time recipient of a canine companion, and I thought it would be great to hear from someone truly what it means to have an assistance dog. Hello everybody, my name is Josiah Lanning and this is my service dog, Kylo. I am a first year MPA student at The Ohio State University. Go Bucks. Um, I had to put that in there. Um, my interaction with Canine Companions began back in 2010 when I was paired with my first service dog, Charlize. Um, she was a tremendous help to me. She helped me when I was on campus. She basically got me through school by myself. I didn't have to rely on mom, dad, um, caretaker, dog was there, she helped me do everything. Then <clears throat> last year I lost my service dog. It <clears throat> brought me to probably the darkest time of my life, but it was also <clears throat> a realization of what Canine Companions is. Canine Companions is truly an organization of people caring about people. And I, I felt and saw the reaching out during the tough times of those six months until I got an invite to attend team training for a second time last May, last April. And then in last May, I was paired with Kylo, and Kylo helps me with picking up items, opening and closing doors, turning lights on and off. He takes my socks off. He um, opens and closes his own bed. Um, he brings me my stuff once I'm in bed so I don't have to holler for my mom or my brother to come bring me my phone or the remote 
he'll just get them, bring them over, and then he goes to bed. And then when I need him, he just gets out and does the exact opposite. But he is a tremendous help, and I honestly don't know where I would be without both donors, puppy raisers, volunteers, and CCI. Thank you. Thank you, Josiah. So you can see there's a lot that happens once a team has formed. And it's not just a set of commands. It's a lifestyle. It's a partnership. It is truly going through life together and sharing life experiences in a very different way. And the opportunities that come when an individual and a dog are paired, as Josiah said, are not just about that individual and dog, but truly the family and the friendship that comes with Canine Companions. So great point there, Josiah. So some ways that we are involved in the community, just for your information, um, we have something called Dog Fest Walk and Roll, and this is our opportunity to engage the community. We invite families and their pet dogs to come spend a morning together. In Central Ohio, this happens in August in New Albany, um, but it happens in 27 different cities across the country. So when I say that we're really all over, you can find volunteers putting these events together in any city near you. Outside of that, we have lots of opportunities to engage in our graduation classes, um, serving lunch at our team trainings, participating at the center, and we're really excited about that. We um, use DogFest as well as an opportunity for families and their dogs to get together. And corporately, we've had a great opportunity to do some lunch and learns and to work with some organizations to share disability etiquette, etiquette around service dogs. This is something that we're seeing more and more, and the more welcoming and diverse our employees get, the more we want to learn about this. So we have also charged ourselves with being an information source for many corporations around town. And Keith. So we are lucky enough to work with Keith and his team and the Rusilli team as we are furthering our building plans um, for a new campus. So we are currently 25 staff members and 66 dogs under one roof. And we are the last region um, to be without dorm rooms. So when we invite these team training classes to town, they come and they share their time, but they are floating back and forth multiple times between the hotel and where we're doing our training, and back and forth to the hotel and training. And in February, that is not fun. It's not really fun in August either. And um, so through that, we wanted to provide one place where we would have fully accessible dorm rooms for them to stay in, where they can stay together as a team, where they can break bread together at night and share the, the successes of the day and the challenges of the day. So this campus will allow us to do all of our training on site with great training rooms. It will give us accessible dorm rooms. It will be an expanded kennel opportunity and a great place for the community to come and get engaged. And we're excited about that. And we have had just a wonderful time and a thoughtful time designing the right campus for our future. So I thought I'd share that. And I'm trying to be thoughtful of time. I'm only two minutes over. So, yeah, we'll take any questions. Thank you. I have, I have a question. Yes. Why the uh, Golden Labs and Golden Retrievers? Uh, so we've had a variety of dogs along the years, but we've been pretty settled on Labs and Golden Retrievers and most often across because of their temperament and their health. Um, we are looking in the world of canine companions and assistance dogs for a dog that is going to wait for the command to be given. We don't want them to make decisions on their own. We want them to be very loyal to the person at the end of their leash. And that fits those two breeds pretty well. Joy. Um, can you give us a cl just the cliff notes of etiquette? I mean, we can't attend the classes, but when we see someone with a service dog out in the public, what's appropriate and what's not? It's a great question. So today would be a great practice. If you would like some puppy loving at the end, I would encourage you to come up and visit with the Stallers puppies. 
But as you come and approach Josiah, who would be happy to show you the things that Kylo can do for him, you should always ask. Just ask. And don't hesitate to ask. The conversation is great. Our graduates are happy to tell you, yes, you may pet them, or no, you may not. What you need to know is it's not just about you petting the dog. It's about Kylo knowing that Josiah's in charge, and no matter what's going on and who's oogling over him, that he's really the one that he needs to respond to. And so any given team may feel differently about this. So join them, come up and talk to them, ask them how they're helpful, but just always please ask about petting and listen, because often you're asking, but you're already halfway there. So listen and have a great conversation with our graduates and learn about how their lives have changed with these dogs. Thank you. Hey, what's the update with Santa Rosa fire? I know that was a big issue. Yeah. So we have evacuated three of our six campuses this year. Um, Florida got evacuated. Santa Rosa was evacuated. Actually, the fires, um, in great news, did not get to our training center. We did have some staff members and some volunteers who did lose their homes, but we were able to evacuate. And the family sense of Canine Companions is amazing. So we had 100 dogs that needed homes. like that and we were able to transport them in our vans about an hour south of the fires and we just met a line of volunteers who said I'll take them home and it's not just hand over the leash it's here's their food this is their schedule this is what we're doing with them um, and they took that on and it was great and actually last weekend we just evacuated our Southern California facility it is also okay all dogs returned everybody happy but we're so so grateful to our volunteer support for that Hi, Megan. Isn't it tough after you've been with this dog for 18 months to <coughs> turn him over to you? <laughs> I have a couple of fun analogies for you. How many of you have children over 22? <laughs> <laughs> we happen to be the proud owners of three of those. They all ran off to college, and we said, go get them. <laughs> we do want them to go out and be successful. So we pair that back to about uh, 18 months, and we raise them with a purpose, and we say, you go get them. And then, like Megan said, we get a report card every month, just like parents got to see progress at college. <coughs> I also look at it, for those of you who like to lease a new car every year and a half, here's my new model right here. <laughs> this, is, this is the one I've been driving for a year and a half. And they're, they're both a Lexus or a Porsche or whatever you like to drive. But um, it's also what you signed up for from the day they arrive. So if you don't think you can, maybe this isn't the program for you. But once you see what they're doing, all of it. You just have to attend one graduation and you understand how you can It's service above self. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Many thanks to you, Megan. We will see you, and all of you are welcome back, January 8th, Monday noon, right here. In between now and then, happy holidays and happy new year. Thank you. Thank you.